How do you choose the right prime lens for street photography? So buying a prime lens can get pretty confusing. There's loads of different options, different focal ranges, different speeds, and they're all at different price points. Worst of all, prime lenses can be pretty expensive. So you don't wanna make a mistake and buy a lens which just ends up sitting on the shelf gathering dust for the next 12 months. But this is actually one of the questions I get asked all the time on social media. And it gets a bit confusing because some photographers swear by a 50 millimeter or a 23 millimeter or a 35 millimeter. But what's right for them may not necessarily be right for you. So in this episode, I'm gonna go through a couple of ways and tips to help you decide the best prime lens for your own style of photography. Briefly, before getting into this episode, you can really help out this channel and support it by hitting that thumbs up button. It really makes the world a difference on the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you haven't already, remember to subscribe. So let's get back to this episode. It's worth noting that for this episode, I'm not talking about specific brands or specific lenses. All the focal lengths I talk about are for full frame. Also, all the advice I give on this episode is based on my own experience doing street photography and travel photography for the past five to six years. So my best piece of advice when it comes to finding the right prime lens is actually to get a zoom lens. Now pretty much all the camera brands have a cheap zoom option, which are often referred to as kit lenses. They usually come bundled with the camera body itself and are usually at that 24 to 70 millimeter range. Now the reason I recommend getting a zoom lens is you'll be able to test out shooting at multiple different focal ranges until you work out which focal ranges you're more comfortable shooting at. So you can shoot some shots at 23 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and so on. And after a couple of months of shooting at these ranges, you'll be able to work out which ranges suit your own style of photography and which ranges you just enjoy taking photos at. Now a really helpful method I used myself early on is to head out with your zoom lens. Don't really think about the focal range you're shooting at and just capture anything you find interesting. After a couple weeks of doing that, get back in the Lightroom and highlight all of your favorite shots. Now what you'll probably realize is most of your favorite photos were all taken at a similar focal range and that way you can start to work out which focal range you're comfortable shooting at. So one major consideration when it comes to choosing a prime lens is how close do you want to get to your subject? Why the prime lenses like the 24 mm, 28 mm or even the 35 mm? you'll have to get pretty close to your subject in order to get those close up looking street photos. Whereas if you are a beginner or you are quite shy about street photography, then it may be worth getting a 50 millimeter or an 80 millimeter and start doing street photography that way. Because if you're using those longer focal ranges, you don't have to get as close to your subject. It's not to say you can't do street photography without getting close to people with a 23 millimeter or a 35 millimeter lens. But in general, when people refer to street photography, you are talking about those kind of close up shots of people or capturing people going about their daily business. And it is harder to get those shots with say a 23 millimeter because you have to get into people's personal space in order to take them. Whereas if you're shooting with say the 50 millimeter, you can be across the street and capture the shot and you're not really interfering with the person while you're taking a shot of them. It's also worth noting that wider prime lenses like the 23 up to the 35 millimeter are a lot more versatile than longer focal ranges like 50 and above. So even with the 35 millimeter, you can capture lots of architectural shots, you can do more landscape stuff and cityscapes. And on the whole, with that one lens, you can pretty much do every single type of photography. Whereas if you have a 50 millimeter and above, it does restrict which types of shots you're gonna get. And that's why if you're gonna get one prime lens and it's gonna be your first prime lens, I do recommend going for a wider one. 35 millimeters is usually the point to go for. It's the reason why the Fujifilm X100V is 35 millimeters. It's because that focal range is so useful. Now where you shoot will play a massive role on which prime lens is gonna be best suited to your photography. Now in cities like New York and in Tokyo, if you're shooting a portrait with say a 23 millimeter or a 28 or a 35 millimeter, it's easier to fill the frame, especially when you're shooting in portrait mode because of the high rise buildings. Whereas here in London, if I'm doing street photography with the 35 millimeter and I'm shooting in portrait orientation, I usually end up capturing lots of the sky, which I don't want to. And that's an example of how your location can affect which prime lens is right for you. That said, when I'm shooting here in London in marketplaces or in narrow streets, 
then I love using that 23 millimeter because it allows me to capture a lot more of my surroundings. It allows me to add context to my images, add more story to my images. If there's a person in frame, then I'm able to get all the surrounding area. And that again, adds to the story of the image. Whereas if I'm shooting that same shot with a 50 millimeter, all I'm gonna capture is the person itself and nothing around it. So it becomes more difficult to kind of explain the story of the image and add context to it. Another example is when I'm shooting on the London Underground here or in public transports in cities around the world. I love shooting at those wider focal lengths like the 35 millimeter, because again, as I said, it allows me to capture more of the surrounding area and add more context to my images. From my own experience doing street photography, I always recommend going for smaller, lightweight prime lenses over the larger, heavier ones. Now, the larger the lenses, the more you're gonna be noticed and the less you'll be blending into the background. And as a street photographer, you really wanna be blending into the street and not being really noticeable because that way you're gonna be able to capture people going about their natural business without really noticing that there's a photographer sticking a camera in their face. But if you're walking around with a gigantic lens, everyone's gonna see you coming from a mile off and that's gonna alter how they act. Or worst case scenario, they just go back into their house or they go back into their shop or they go back into a building and kind of avoid you. It's also worth keeping in mind, if you are doing street photography, especially when you're traveling, you're probably gonna be walking around for five, six hours a day. That's certainly how it is in my case. When I go out to shoot, I'm usually out for six to seven hours. And when I'm traveling, it's a lot longer than that. And when you are walking around that long, every kilogram and every gram around your neck does make a big difference. So if I'm stuck with a gigantic lens all day long, it's gonna tire out my hand, it's gonna tire out my neck. And if I'm doing that day after day after day for weeks, then it's gonna have a significant impact on how much I enjoy my photography. And if I'm not enjoying my photography, I'm probably not taking good shots. Again, it's personal preference, but I tend to stick to lighter, smaller lenses and I try to avoid carrying the large, heavy prime lenses when I go out to do street photography. If you plan to shoot at nighttime, you're gonna need a faster lens. And by faster, I mean lower f-stop. So the f-stop refers to the lens's aperture, and the lower the f-stop is, the more light your lens lets into your camera's sensor, which basically means you're gonna get cleaner, better images at nighttime because you don't have to raise your camera's ISO that high. It's worth noting that fast prime lenses are usually more expensive, they're also larger and heavier as well. So I'd probably hold off getting a fast lens if it's gonna be your first prime lens. Instead, I'd work out what my favorite focal length is first, for splashing the cash on an expensive fast prime lens. For example, on the Fujifilm system, there's the 50 mm f2, which is a relatively cheap lens. It's also very small and lightweight. Fujifilm also have a 50 mm f1, which is a lot more expensive. It's much bigger and much heavier. So in that case, I'd recommend getting that 50 mm f2 first, working out if you really enjoy shooting at that focal range before stepping up to get that 50 mm f1. <music> So one final consideration, if you are shooting somewhere where it rains a lot, do get a lens which is weather sealed. Also get a camera body that's weather sealed as well. In my own case, I absolutely hate worrying about weather conditions when I'm out shooting, which is why I always shoot with weather sealed cameras and weather sealed camera lenses where possible. So to wrap this episode up, there is no one perfect lens. It completely depends on your own style of photography. If you're asking for my recommendation, I'd say get a zoom lens first, work out which focal ranges you enjoy shooting at, and then buy your prime lens accordingly. Or if you are gonna go for a prime lens, I'd say go for a 35 millimeter, just because it's a more versatile focal range. And from that point, you can kind of work out whether you want a focal range which is a bit closer to a subject, so say a 50 millimeter, or if you want a focal range which is wider, so you can go for the 23 millimeter or a 16 millimeter, something like that. So hopefully you found this episode helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe. If you have any questions about buying a prime lens, drop them down in the comments below. Or if you have any tips of your own, again, drop them down below in the comments. A huge thanks for watching this episode and supporting this channel. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one.